Hello, folks. It's Peter Coffeen again, speaking as a member of Norfolk Artists and Friends, an organization of professional artists living in the Norfolk area with friends from New Hartford, Connecticut, Sheffield, Massachusetts, Woodbury, Connecticut, as well as Norfolk itself. As most of you know, our group has been sponsored for 12 years by the Norfolk Chamber Music Festival, with an annual August exhibition at the Battelle Steckel Gallery on the grounds of the Yale campus in Norfolk, and in recent years as part of a town-wide festival, Win, a weekend in Norfolk. The virus, of course, has changed all of that. However, thanks to the generosity of the Norfolk Library Associates, we're doing a series of two-month changing exhibitions at the library. Now showing is the fifth iteration of the series. This video welcomes you to the exhibition and also invites you to attend in person at the Norfolk Library, masked with social distancing respected. So let's go inside and take a look at the work of 19 artists and hear a bit about their work in the words of the artists themselves. Our first artist is Mary Beth Whalen, as she is a guest artist from Norfolk. And she has a work, an acrylic oil on masonite. It's 36 by 48, and it's titled Looking Back. Snowball was my father's childhood horse when our family business was operated as a livery stable. She was memorable for her size and beauty in our small town. Our second work is by Madeline Falk. It's an oil, 10 by 12, and it's titled, You Looking at Me? Madeline offers a quote by Mary Oliver, who said, what would the world be like without music, or rivers, or the green and tender grass? What would this world be like without dogs? Well, a lot less fun, I would say. Number three is by Hilary Van Wright. It's a paper collage, and it's called Celestial Prayer, one and two. Hillary says that the Norfolk Library has provided the perfect opportunity to share new directions in my work. I'm excited about doubling down and creating identical pieces simultaneously. Our fourth work is by Edward Colt. It's an oil painting, 11 by 14, and it's titled Wire-Haired Dachshund and Puppy. This painting is of a wired-haired dachshund and a puppy, belonging to my cousin, Edward says. Kind of evoking the same thing that Mary Oliver was saying. Number five is uh, Catherine Moore. She has a watercolor, 15 by 18. It's titled Fish Under the Bridge. She says, on a walk to the bridge on a warm, sunny day, these happy fish caught my eye and caught the brilliant sunlight that rippled through the water. Next is a work by Harvey Kimmelman. It's an oil on panel, 16 by 20, and it's titled Bowls of Apples on Stool. Harvey says he paints from life, and whether a bowl of fruit or a distant mountain only captures the light and colors that have moved him. Work number seven is by Tom Hloss. It's a mixed media on wood panel, and it's titled Fields of Gold. Tom says, like the memories of the happiest of summer days, may this painting bring you warmth and joy. Echo that, Tom. Number eight is a work by Jean Grasmere. It's an eight by 10 oil, and its title is Ms. Cardinal. The lady cardinal has lovely subtle colors that complement the male. I imagine that she awaits the gift of a sunflower seed from her mate.
The next work is by Ronald J. Sloan. It's an acrylic on canvas panel, 18 by 22, and its title is John Was Last for the Picnic Again. Ronald says, I tried to hold hands with time last night. Tomorrow, when the sun is warm, I will try again. Number 10 is by Laura Lasker. It's an acrylic painting, 18 by 22, and it's titled White Sailboats. Sailboats, having patiently wintered, tied to their saltwater dock, are eagerly awaiting release from the harbor to explore the Long Island Sound shoreline. Next is a work by Karen Linden. It's called Frost Ridge Creek. It's an oil, 11 by 14. And Karen says that last year had good points despite frigid weeks. Snow was great for skiing, clinging to pines and meadow grasses, and lovely beside raging brooks. Number 12 is by Ruth Ann Olson. It's part of her Look Up series called Marshmallow Sky. It's an acrylic on canvas and it's 36 by 36. And Ruth Ann has said, I came upon these marshmallow clouds one cold fall evening. I stopped to enjoy them, but quickly they began to roast in a fiery sunset. Number 13 is my photograph, 10 by 13, and its title is The Blues, Number 3. Street photographers are aware of what Cartier-Bresson called the decisive moment, or in street talk, a grab shot. So here's one of mine. Number 14 is a work by Pamela Arnois. It's a watercolor, 25 by 32, and it's titled The Clouds Watched Over. A fundamental component of my artwork is to connections between people, places, and nature. My intent is to evoke a visually shared humanity. Next we have a charcoal drawing by John Riedemann titled Peregrine Flight. John is quoting Emily Dickinson, who said, I hope you love birds too. It's economical. It saves going to heaven. That's what she said, folks. Number 16 is a hand-wrought necklace by Janet K. Marks. It's a sterling chain with large coin pearls 19 inches long. Janet says it's believed pearls promote healing and have spiritual and magical properties. Luster coin pearls hang from sterling silver links, a playful yet elegant and sophisticated necklace. Indeed. Number 17 is by Lillian Woodworth. Its title is Both Worlds. It's an oil on canvas, 24 by 24. Lillian says, I continue to paint flowers as a means to bring a joyful experience in confusing times. Number 18 is a work by Christian Cesari, another of our guest artists. It's an acrylic on canvas, 36 by 48, and its title is New House for Sale. Christian says, new constructions fascinate me. This painting is an ensemble of simplified shapes and colors, loosely put together to catch the passing sunlight. And lastly, we come to Susan W. Rood, 
who has a line of cut collaged, 24 by 24, titled Game Changer. Susan says line of cuts, like life stories, can be combined, examined, and retold, and may change from positive to negative and back. Thank you for coming along on this virtual tour of our exhibition. We hope you will find the time to come see it in person.